Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dwyer, and welcome back to some more 25 Days of Go. Needless to say, Proverbs that I really have interest of covering uh, just about used up. Just about used up. But what I really have been enjoying doing is pointing out how these Proverbs have been used in other people's games, namely professional games. So I think I'm going to go and hit up another one of those, and as I had that thought, a great series was played. Let's see, this was... I forget the name of the t I forget the name of the actual series. I apologize for that. It'll be in the description along with the link to the game uh, down below in the description. But it was a professional versus amateur series, and if you know anything about the games that I love going over, I do love highlighting professional versus amateur games because you can see the difference in thought and where the two are kind of going wrong. So this is a professional nine don versus a amateur six don i do believe um now i obviously am not going to cover the entire game that's going to be down below you can go take a look at that if you'd like but i do want to point out some interesting parts where we see proverbs in action so our professional nine don player is in fact black our six don amateur player is white and the game begins off with an attempt by the professional to perhaps set up a mini or micro Chinese variation here, which is denied, which is denied. Um, now, I, I could be lame and be like, yes, the proverb that you see here is when you don't know what to do, you continue game. But that's not what's really going on. It's just that white doesn't want like this to happen or this to happen. White just doesn't want to go against this. He knows it exists and he's avoiding it. So, white says, I approach you. Black says, I have a corner. Extension, okay, okay, okay. Now here's the thing where we start getting into interesting, uh, interesting ideas. Um, for example, playing along the larger side. This side now is larger than this side because we could make a group here, but it's only going to be a two-space extension at best. If we choose to commit to something like that, I mean, what are we what are we really going to do here? Go here and then back off and give our opponent a corner. Seems a little bit small, so white or sorry, black bugs out and goes to the larger side. Now white has to make a decision on how to um, attach. He could diagonal out. He could diagonal out. He chooses to attach to one of the stones. Only question is which one. Now, if he attaches to this one, we can expect, you know, maybe the Hana here, white going in and then black going into the corner. This is more of knowledge of Giuseppe than a particular proverb. Uh, let's see, black. Wait, I took off one too many stones. Sorry, that stone does exist. There we go great thing about going over a game on a real board when I do things like this, I'm not technically destroying the tree. Because uh, I, don't, I don't see a tree here. So, bite me. Goes into the corner. Now, we're not going to actually block this way. Can anybody tell me why we are not going to block this way? Why aren't we blocking this way as white? Why aren't we blocking this way as white? Is there a proverb? Is there anything you know about Go that would tell us why we're not going to do this exact variation? The boom, boom, and then the boom. Whoa, that's not quite, quite right, is it? I meant to have that one go forward. Why we're not doing this variation? The reason why we're not doing this variation is because we're now getting this, uh, this lovely little wall. And what we have to do with this wall right now is turn it to territory. We have to, right? Because we can't like just keep trying to come out and pretend that this magically isn't going to be reduced instantly. So this actually is going to get over-concentrated. So we have to do something like this. We're probably going to make this exchange, which is going to shrink this even further. And then even after that, there might be ways to reduce it further. So we're not going to try to over-concentrate that wall. So instead... Don't, 
stone. Get rid of stones that are on the board, stupid. So instead, after the Hane, we see an interesting development. And that is White saying, well, this is going to get over concentrated if I block here. So I'm going to block here instead. Um, now, normally you could just play here. And then, like, take care of that. Black decided to connect instead. To make things a bit more complicated. This part I'm not going to go into too great of detail in, suffice it to say. Uh, this is a pretty set Shiseki uh, in this lower left-hand corner. You might not be aware of it, but it is. And this is to, just to try to keep everyone unstable uh, and have like a lot of Anji in the area. So from this particular position, we now have a very interesting set of proverbs coming up. Because like up until now, it's kind of just been like choices of Juseki, not really, uh, not not really much in the way of proverbs. I don't believe. Uh, but here we start getting interesting. We start getting interesting because White decides to use this as thickness to attack, which you're supposed to do. So he says, "Bam, I'm going to attack," and he's not getting too close, right? Because there's... Did I go over that one? I might have. I don't remember. Uh, usually there's a proverb. If I hadn't, if I didn't go over it, I will now. Uh, that states... That says from one stone, you can extend two. From two, you can extend three. Right? Kind of giving you an idea of like how, to, how far you can extend uh, your stones. So from here, he's being very, very careful, right? From here, he's being, being careful. He's not going to uh, go here. That's like way too close. From here, he's going to try to get away with like minimum safe distance. Makes sense, makes sense. Anything larger, we have to be careful because he gets maybe a base here, right? We want to avoid that. So he's trying to keep minimum safe distance while applying pressure. And now how Black uh, responds to this? is actually rather uh, proverbial in nature because he's got the two stones. He has a choice. He can choose to uh, attach to this, or, or not attach, but uh, shoulder at this. He could lean on the stone to get strength. That is a proverb that he could select, right? But look what happens after this. From here, let's just say best case scenario. Best case, best case. Um, best case, something like this, right? Something like this is probably a best case scenario. Where, you know, we, we get out, we're fine. Mission accomplished, right? But mm, is that is really, really, really too much to be given away. Because we have to turn around and really put the hammer down on this group, but this group is almost completely alive. I mean, we can Hane here and say you're not alive locally, but then it's going to be like, uh, yeah, I am. Or it might even go poke at your shape and be like, okay, fine, then I'm just going to just poke at you. So th this group, we can't say that we're getting influence here to attack this group because this group really can't be attacked very much. I mean, it, it just can't. So this doesn't make sense as a result, right? So this is a problem that we can do without. So instead of leaning against that group, he goes to another one. Hane at the head of two and three stones. If he gets to Hane here, he can cut. That has to live local, and then he's got a wall. That is suddenly profit, right? That is profit. And while this group is getting stronger, well, that proverb of uh, from one, two, two, three, uh, kind of goes into effect against this group again. Because as this gets stronger, this suddenly becomes... Whoops, sorry, it's not on the board. This suddenly becomes too close to thickness, right? So, has to extend. Same proverb, if we can hane here. Why am I even pointing? Look, I don't have a bunch of stones in my hand right now. Uh, yeah, so if we get to hane here... 
there is no way to deal with this short of the Atari here. If we Atari here, Atari, connect, extend, right? Then this has to live local. These stones are horribly screwed and I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what's going to go over here. So we're not going to let that happen. Hani out of two and three stones are to be, are, are to be respected. White plays the Hane because he feels that he's strong enough because of nearby stones. Black plays the Hane in return, but check out this. From this very, very simple situation, we have Proverbs again. Because white plays the Hane again. And we could Atari... And we could Atari... But then we'd have to go back and, like, do something here. And white's fine. White's pretty strong, right? And this stone is, like, really, really weak. So there's that thing about beware of going back. Remember that? To protect? We don't want to be in that situation. Especially now because, I mean, there's, like, this. And then there's, like, this. We don't want to have to, like worry about going back and protecting because white probably doesn't after we've strengthened him with all those like cuts and removing most of his cutting points right so we don't want to do that we don't want to do that so we're going to be aware about going back we're going to be aware about going back and instead we're black just plays up because this is pretty strong now this is like not a cutting point that we take advantage of that's not on the board either thank you and now white has to go back and protect right but white says, no, I'm going to be greedy pants, and I'm going to stand up. So, this is protected. Now, we don't interrupt it going back and protecting. So we can play this, which is a ladder. And as you can see, this is now over top of the stone that was threatening us. This stone is getting a little bit too deep. Have to be careful. We're dealing with this. Black extends out because he knows that if this cut is taken advantage of right now, he's got the Atari. He'd have the Atari giving this group one, two, three, four, five liberties. That's a lot of liberties. So we can just like zoom, come out and completely eat off this stone. These, this group would be pretty A-OK -okay because they've got a lot of liberties on the outside. Uh, can't really just go back and kill it or anything like that, and we'd be good to go. So, all right, we're fine. White defends, and then black says, this is too close to me. It's even been capped. Time to attack. You see how that kind of all came about because of Proverbs? If we were too aggressive and we weren't mindful about the danger of going back and protecting, like white has to do here, white was not mindful of that. White uh, had to go back and protect, so he couldn't go back and protect his stone that's now too close to thickness. Black's in a pretty reasonable position now. As a result, he has to do things that you're not supposed to do. I didn't cover this proverb, but you're not supposed to peep at cut points, but he has no choice. This is not up to him anymore. If he doesn't want that stone dead, he has to get out. And how is he going to get out? He has to peep. What else does he have to do? You all know what's coming up next. What else does he have to do? What other thing does he have to do? He has to attach for strength. But the minute you attach, you can't kill the stone that's putting pressure on you. Right? Because you know that you're putting, you're going to strengthen this stone. So we we can't kill that stone anymore. That, that stone is just going to be completely fine. All we're doing is just trying not to be killed right now. So Black's happy.
Okay, so from here, we have a proverb, right? Now that this group is nice and solid and has escaped, we can go back and look at the board because we're alive. This, this stone and this stone being, you know, dead into this group is, you know, pretty okay. So the question is, where are we supposed to play? And for that, there's a proverb. Our largest, if we're fine, if we're fine, and if we can identify that it's kind of like hard to attack a group right now, then we probably aren't really interested in being like too aggressive on the group because we know it's just going to live. And then what, what, where's the profit in that? Where's profit in that? So what we want to do is go and look at large points on the board. And one large point that we know our opponent really wants to get in right now is something like this. Really wants to answer that uh, approach under the corner and not be surrounded. That's what white wants to do. So right now we're going to take that for ourselves. White's largest point has become our largest point. Another proverb that I do believe we learned this month. Now, white's not going to be tricked. He's not going to go fishing when his house is on fire. He decides to defend himself because he knows that this group is still in a lot of trouble. It can apply pressure to this one. And thus fighting resumes. But the fact that black did get that move in is still really, really big. Regardless of the outcome here, the fact that black got that in is enormous. Okay, now, proverb time, yet again. We know that our group is okay because of the stones are nicely captured. Uh, we know that we're not surrounded, we're pretty much out. We've also sacrificed some stones on the inside to get this outside thickness here. So what are we supposed to do with thickness? Are we supposed to make territory with it? No, you're supposed to use it to attack something. And hopefully to profit, hopefully to profit but not through just trying to make territory. So on this board, where can we play to attack for profit while not, uh, while not just making the territory? Do you know? Any ideas? Any ideas at all? Black caps because this area is completely open. If this uh, gets stronger, or let's just say something a bit more, you know, weird. There. If this, like, develops into something, we can see that there's profit immediately obtained while this group is just trying to live, right? So we can see the goal, we can see why we're attacking, we can see what we're trying to do. Let's see. I think I moved this somehow at some point. There we go. So yes, he goes in caps. So from here we can see, did we actually manage to secure what we wanted to? Did we get more territory uh, in this particular attack than our opponent did just living? And we can see the answer to that is a resounding yes. I mean, this entire area of the board right now needs to be considered by white very heavily as to how he's going to reduce it.
All right, so there's some interesting things that are going on the board right now that I did not mention while I was going over them. Uh, for one, once it became apparent that the only thing that we can do here is be reduced, uh, Black didn't prioritize these stones anymore. He prioritized the corner and trying to cap these two stones so he can maybe grow uh, something else in the area. Now we see that White also poked here and some, uh, some beginners might be wondering, uh, can't Black actually just get cut here now? Answer to that is yes. However, if we Atari here, White connects. If we Atari, this becomes an Atari. Oh, stupid, just show it. So if we do this, right? White connects, then we Atari. White connects. We can now cut this, and that's a pretty good exchange. We can exchange these stones for these because they're much, much larger, right? See that? Cool. So he doesn't really care that that, connect, that, that cut is actually possible because there's no reason to care that that cut is actually possible. Uh, I don't think we got this one. This should be over here. There we go. So yeah, that cut, not really meaningful right now. All it's meaningful is that we're alive over here. This cut, which is correct, yes. That cut is viable and everything's fine. Now, getting to cut through down here was very, very large because you can see here he attached, he attached to not to try to kill this, this is gonna live. He attached to try to make the strong group, now that it's alive, it's a pretty strong group, and he's attaching to it to make this area uh, larger. So why not? Getting an attack, getting a larger area, and all he's doing is making a group that's already strong a little bit stronger. This is a must. If we play here, the four liberties go to three. Those three go to two. Two against three. This is captured, game over. This is the last really great uh, proverb that I wanted to go over. And after the Hane here, we do not in fact, we do not in fact see this. We don't in fact see the Atari because uh, beginners tend to play the Atari. What you wanna do is leave that potential to be thrown in. We don't wanna make that a solid eye. We don't wanna make that a solid connection. Don't wanna do anything to that because if we Atari connects, we'd have to pull back to get sent to anyway, but now, this is a solid and that could maybe be something. So right now we can actually go back and kill this because as we see here, Don't care how many forcing moves you have over on that side of the board. You cannot make an eye. You can make not make two eyes, sorry. So white resigns. Um, those of you who can't see it, let's go over it a little bit more. If we play here, this is still false. So we just play here. If we play that for ourselves, we just throw in and then depending on how white responds, either by here, we can just throw in twice, throw in once here, takes, throw in there again, and it's all bad. Or we can do that in the reverse order and connect there instead, in which case we just throw in twice over here and the eye's still gone. So either way, sad to say, but white is gone. Gone, 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 gone. 
This was a very huge pickup for white, or for black, sorry, the upper right corner is enormous, and we can see white's territory is not numbering very high. He doesn't really have points. He's got this over here, a little bit down there, and that was about it. And that's just not enough. Nowhere near enough. So I hope you enjoyed this game and looking at all the different proverbs that were occurring in it. That was our main focus today. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you're enjoying the series. Though we are almost through with it. We are almost through with it. But still a little bit left to go. So I will be back again tomorrow. I hope you join me then. Happy holidays, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care.